What is the pain like for a telly to be? Are you seriously asking about America? Isn't this is America where people talk, talk about money? Uh, next question, I played the fifth. Oh. Real talk is kind of rare, I'm turning heads on my occasions. Conversating with some bosses, taking charge, I think it's blatant. I'm the center of attention, trying to be the entertainment. If you ain't talking, build a rent, no room for conversation. Teletubbies, mm. I know that's a huge thing. Mm. Everybody knows Teletubbies. I mean, I grew up with that. Did you grow up 100%. with that? Hundred percent. Did you grow up with that? Yeah, for sure. Teletubbies. I always felt like, to me, there was always Teletubbies or Tweenies. You get me? Oh. There's two of them. Yeah. There's it's two gonna go of them. there, right? And I felt it. like yeah. I always felt like there was just a certain feeling about Teletubbies. It just made you feel warm. I can. That's very younger age, isn't it? But Tweenies felt a bit more. I don't want to say contrived. I just didn't believe in them. I didn't rate the characters. You get I'm me? right with you there because you know, this is an old, older reference, but it's like back in the days when it's laughable. But you know, people used to say about a rival between the Jacksons and the Osmonds. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. What? <laughs> Seriously? What? Stays present singing, but you have to yeah. talk louder. You have to choose your words carefully and go. Hey, are you for real? Yeah. You know, uh, cab on. You know, exactly. I mean? Henry Cooper and Muhammad Ali. Really? Exactly. Oh, this is what I'm saying. I don't feel like that's. That's Tweenies and Teletubbies. I don't even feel like that's a comparison. You get me? Tweenies, but it's clear that you like Teletubbies. Yeah, everybody that. else likes Teletubbies as well. Exactly. 121 countries. Like Tweenies. Like six. I, like that. I don't know, but it's something like six. Exactly. You know what I mean? Come on. And if I'm honest, I'm not even just going to say this to flatter you. So don't feel like this is just for your benefit. Mm. I always thought that my favourite Teletubby was Poe. <laughs> like, yeah. it, was, it was Dipsy. No, no, she, she, it was Dipsy. the Eastern flavour. <laughs> it was Dipsy. Dipsy was an amazing character. How did that even come across? Like, was you just... Was, did this come from comedy and then someone picked you up and then... Are you talking about... Getting how did it come role. across being oh getting yeah, the role get, yeah, yeah. it was I'm not an actor and I keep saying that people keep arguing with me yes you are because I end up doing doing roles so I'll talk about something else in, in a few minutes but this was just an audition in which you, you came to, yeah, believe it or not and cut a long story short the show hadn't been commissioned because Ragdoll Productions who eventually got the commission that I was working yeah. for they were one of three companies doing their pitches to, to replace another a daytime show so it's a big commitment because it's every day of the week five yeah. days a week and the name was Telly Teddies. Later on, they found out that name had been registered already, so it became <coughs> obvious. Mm. And I became the first person brought on board. It was all ironically the first person. The first yeah. Teddy Teddy. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Jeez. So in fact, Nikki, who plays Lala, she's yeah. writing her book about it, and um, mm. she sent me a draft to make notes and remind stuff. So she says that. Yeah. So I, I was the first person brought on board, and it was a strange process because one the show has not been commissioned yet so you, and it's very very strange one they're asking you to move around a certain way yeah and then you go into london a couple quite a few times to try and the prototype of what would become the suit so if you think of those holiday camps where you have the sort of sumo suits so, yeah. you know yeah. 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 it was a bit like that so of course you get down there you try this on somebody makes some notes yeah. measurements you get you're literally in there 20 minutes i remember it was in wimbledon so i'd go to london go down to wimbledon then You've been paid anyway, so you've got the afternoon in London, and I'd say to fellow comedians and friends and family, I'm up for this thing. It's a bit strange. So. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you more if it happens. <laughs> and then they got the commission, and they, they messaged me to say we're going to cast the other three. So they're going through that process. So uh, okay, what I will say is, after months of rehearsal, first in London and then moving to location in Stratford and Avon, when we were doing the first sequence, of something I was saying to Nikki the other day, it's like being in a post box. So, because you're seen through the mouth of the top, you've yeah, got yeah. no peripheral vision, oh. so you've got an earpiece to help you along. Because yeah, 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 yeah. literally, you can see that. Yeah. And I remember yeah. looking at it the other thing and thinking, "This is really strange." So, <laughs> you know, that's what within it. With that, with that earpiece, do they tell you what to do? Some of the time, yeah, because obviously you, you can't, can't see where you're stepping. Like you're got, rabbits yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So you've blocked it out out of costume, yeah. and then you're going for it and so on. But if you're going a bit to, so they can see a bit left because no peripheral vision and that sort yeah. of thing. But I remember thinking. This is really strange. It's a bit mad as well because you're from you're no, Caribbean. Yeah. So are you Jamaican? Jamaican, Caribbean, Cuban. Cuban, yeah. Jamaican, Cuban. It's, yeah. it's crazy to think like if you think of the connotations of a Jamaican man, you're not gonna think about a Teletubby. Mm. Oh yeah. So well, anyone, anyway, which culture would you think a yeah, Chinese I know, guy? I know, I know. Oh, <laughs> they they are a Polish man. You know, but I, I know yeah, you're getting it's, that. It's but. crazy to know that this big black man underneath this suit. Yeah. And you can you can see it through the suit. You can, you can see it through the suit. I knew, yeah. Yeah, I knew. There was something about Dipsy when I watched Teletubbies. It's just the way it was moving. Yeah. It just it's just but the way it was. His shoulders rolled a bit. Yeah. More and it was always like, 
Like yeah, this. Yeah. There was Yo. no accent until they wanted that. And the same with Poi Fan Lee, the actress who, who plays Poe. Yeah. You talk to people from the Chinese community and that part of the world, and they could spot the things she was putting in there. You know, yeah. she was using Cantonese language in the same way. I've said it more than one interview. Nipsey walk along going down. Papa gum, papa gum, papa gum. That's actually, <laughs> that's actually yeah. a, a reggae tune called The Whip. So, yeah. Lots of MCs sit on that rhythm to this day. It's a studio one rhythm yeah. called the Instrumental. So you bring your culture, but you're encouraged to bring your culture and you're, you're proud to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? So wherever you come from, it's, it's rare you get an opportunity to be you because why you can call them characters, yeah. loosely mm. speaking, they're, they're toddlers, they're space age toddlers. So again, yeah. when, when in dressing rooms doing comedy shows and with your fellow comics, we always talk about what you're doing else apart from this. I'm trying to describe that yeah. to somebody who's never I, seen. I feel like you're underselling it. I feel like they yeah. are characters. Do you know what I noticed though? In the costumes, even the complexions of the Teletubbies were different. That's so correct. you're like, you could tell that they were different races as well. Mm -hmm. And that's and no accident. Right. And the, exactly. And the cast were also multiracial. Was it? What was it like working? Were, were they trying to be diverse and stuff? They were. Uh, Red Dog Productions. Their whole ethos has been about that. So credit yeah. where it is due. And bear in mind, this is the mid '90s. It, it was. The working day is 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So that in itself is, you know, a long day, mm -hmm. and the suit weighs nearly three stone, mm -hmm. and you run up and down hills. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get you get cut, <laughs> you, you get the exercise, and, uh, exactly. And there's lots of uh, lots of good fun, but there's also lots of, of, of cursing. Yeah, of course, yeah. if you get something wrong, or if you say because you can't, obviously, you have to do take three of them, and you forget sometimes. I remember. <laughs> that you know there's a control room with sound and vision mixing on site and you're you're in your own little zone you know what yeah. i mean you're in the heavy <laughs> and you forget they hear you muttering to yourself you know what i mean and you yeah and you, you know we can hear oh sorry but it's, a, it's a long day you know over the course of that many hours if you're in there imagine, imagine hearing a telly toby say bumba car <laughs> <laughs> so you know the last time you were um dipsy did you know it was your last time and how did you feel that's a funny one actually because we filmed for six years was it oh I think it's right. 96, we were filming most of it. It went out in 97. And then we finished, I think, in 2000. Well, we finished in 2002, so we did five years on location in Stratford and Avon, one year in London, working at Pinewood Studios. And then they called us back. So years later, after five years, they called, they called us. And it, these things make you laugh because they call us to a dinner in London. We'd stay in touch, we hadn't seen each other, so it's nice, and you're glad, you know, food in a nice London <laughs> restaurant, and they're like, oh, it's 10 years of the show, this is 2007 about to start, do you want to go abroad and do some PR, you know, for the show, because as, as I said before, the show's in 121 countries, so the first thing they said to you is, do you want to go to New York for a week? You know, imagine New York for a week with pay. Yeah. And I remember that sort of thing. You know what that sort of thing wow. you're doing? Oh, well, I'll have to speak to my agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all doing that. <laughs> we're all doing it with a smile and <laughs> Come out the room. Yeah. Come out the room. Yeah. <laughs> we're all like, because <laughs> like, yeah. you didn't know what we we're there for. So, you know, you're thinking, there's always going to be something with Ragdoll or something. Yeah. But, you know, so when I said, a week with pay, you know, you know, you have to keep your, your pay. Yeah, you have to stop yourself from smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so you can exactly. negotiate. Yeah, they don't yeah. see you too excited. Thank you. Hundred <laughs> percent. That sort of stuff. And then that year we went to Singapore. The weird thing is, comedian Quincy. Um, you'll know Quincy. The plane landed. It's the longest plane journey I've ever done. You didn't start to realise how far some places are because it was a 12-hour flight. To New York? No, this is this is Singapore. And it's the same sort of promotional <laughs> route. Right. It's a 12-hour flight. <laughs> the guy next to me. I was chatting to him, you know, a little bit of conversation here and then. As I get off, he was going to stretch his legs. He was going to Australia. And that was another eight hours. I'm like, raw. You know, was like, how no. far Australia is, you know what I mean? But I turn on my phone in Singapore and there's a text from Quincy to say, you're in Singapore. <laughs> how do you know? He was doing a comedy club out there. Yeah. And the people doing the PR for the BBC also did the PR for the comedy club. Uh. So he so was able to. But it was really weird to think. It's mad how the world works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So did you go to the public club? Of course, yeah, of course you do. Know, and, and you know, comedians, even though you're there working for Beeb and you're yeah. on BBC type, you always get time to yourself on these foreign trips. So it's more a matter of thinking, can you get on stage out there? Because yeah. anywhere where they speak English, you know, that's why, to be honest, that's why we envy musicians, because comedians, we can go to the English speaking world. Whereas yeah. a musician, obviously, you and your band and your vibes, you know, they don't need to speak English to yeah. get, so they yeah. can go yeah. even further. Yeah. There's yeah. advantages. Mm -hmm. You see, when he was, when he was, Prime Dipsy. Prime Dipsy. Is that what? Did you <laughs> used, is that was that one of your techniques when it came to girls? Did you used to drop that in when you spoke to a girl? What do you I'm say? A bit old. <laughs> I was, I, I'm, I'm older, but I'm not gonna. Is that how you got your wife or your? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 
my sister, not, not the uh, not the mother, but the wife has been around a long time. Well, that's how I went to Dave Chappelle. She was there. So, <laughs> okay, he didn't so, need these, oh, these things. Gosh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he was born with what he needed. <laughs> so that's, a, that's a weird one, though, isn't it? Can you imagine if, if you were, say, 25 and you're... I, I, and trying to meet people, you're gonna go. Are you yeah. gonna do that? <laughs> would yes. that be your start? Why would you not do that? I'd it's do that. impressive. Exactly. Right, I'd okay. be impressed. Hopefully, there'll be other things you can bring to the table in terms of. Yeah. I don't know, but that's anyway. the icebreaker. That's just the icebreaker. Right. You say that, and they're like. Hello, what? I'm, I'm oh my Dixon. Gosh. And, then, and then you show us some of the Jamaican moves that you threw in. Right, and okay. And then that, that's exactly. so it. You're saying that, but you should see how many girls I've got now that I told them I'm interviewing Dipsy. So imagine if I said I was <laughs> Dipsy. Yeah. I remember moments of me feeling really old, because then, then time now I was trying to build up my empire, my, my, my company yeah. empire of gigs, so it's more like, oh, this can fund that, that can fund the other, that sort of thing. You Speaking know? of funds, what is the pay like for a Teletubby? Are you seriously asking about that? <laughs> if it is America where people talk, talk about money, uh, next question, I plead the fifth. Okay. I'll come back well, to you on that one. I can imagine it's a lot. I can imagine it's a lot. <laughs> you keep imagining it. All these lights around me, I need sponsors off of Ray Bans. Roll the velvet carpet invitation to the main man. I could go and run it up. I need to manifest my thoughts. I'm the brightest in the building, getting down with real talk.